When I was six years old, I have a vivid memory of this. I remember one night my dad coming home and he had a DVD and it was Spartacus with Kirk Douglas. And I watched it and I watched it over and over. It completely blew open my imagination. I would run around the playground in school leading my own slave revolt, the fourth servile war, shouting to the other kids, come join us. They had no idea what I was talking about. Anyway, since then, probably what, 20 years ago, I've always wanted to come here and see the land that so inflamed my six-year-old brain with ideas of uh, almost fantasy, this fantastical world, uh, history, which at the time wasn't history, it was, uh, it was a, a, an open book, um, a context in which you can set your imagination, and I did. So uh, yeah, here we are. Welcome to Italy. They say. I'm gonna go up that way. If the police don't like it, well, let's begin to tell them. So. Mighty. Now, which way do I go? I suppose I go this way. Now, last motorway. Oh God! I suppose this is a suburb of Napoli. This is why I didn't want to go into Napoli itself because uh, I guess it's just going to be traffic, non-stop traffic. And that's the famous Mount Vesuvius. It looks uh, comically volcano-y, doesn't it? Like, it's like what a child would draw a volcano at. Actually, do you know what it is? It looks exactly like the volcanoes my dad would make for us as kids out of mashed potatoes. You'd mash it up along the, in the middle of the bowl and then you'd pour milk on top and that's exactly what it looks like. And speaking of mashed potatoes, do with a spot of lunch. And there's only one thing you can eat if you're in Napoli, I suppose. Let's get some pizza. Up to the height. That's the real deal. 
took um, two minutes to make, cost a fiver, and my god, did it taste good. Holy shit. There. there she is, Vesuvius. Mashed potatoes. Of course, Vesuvius is probably more famous for the town that it absolutely buried. Under six meters of volcanic ash in 79 BC. There's literally nowhere I can go, man. No need to peek. Pompeii! That's where we're going. Now, let's see how much this is going to set me back because I expect it's going to be a lot. Chaos! Chaos! All around! Oh, fuck me, look at that! Jesus Christ! A lot of people. No, no way. Come on. No way! Nope, no, nope, nope. Nope. I'm back in December when there isn't a million people around. I have to really ask myself if I'm doing the right thing here because it's Pompeii, right? It's how often are you going to be here? But there are so many people around, so many people. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to do it because I, it's just, I won't enjoy it. Probably costs a bomb to get in anyway. I looked at going up the Vesuvius last night, I was checking it out, it cost about 20 euro to go up the mountain. I mean, climbing the mountain is enough punishment as it is, you don't need to pay to punish yourself, I'm not that sadistic. Fuck it, I'm gonna get out of here. things I like most archaeological sites like this and I, mean, I say like this this is the king the queen of archaeological sites Pompeii well on the other hand it's also the thing I one of the things I hate most which is crowds of people then again my little brother would say, it's just piles of stones. But it's this pile of stones. Anyway. I'm consoling myself with the knowledge that where we're going, there's going to be no shortage of piles of stones. So. I guess I'll just hit the road. Um, let's see, let me get out of here. I texted Marina, my girlfriend, to tell her I'm not going in because it looks like hell in there. And she replied back, I think the, I think the inhabitants thought so too about 1900 years ago.
last. somewhere in Andalusia. Can you believe this is something that hardly ever happens to me but I'm feeling just a little bit homesick. Not for Ireland but homesick for second homesick for Andalusia. It's the olive trees and the lights and the mountains. It's, uh, Let him find out where this place is. Oh no, it's a bit up there. Wait, how? Oh, go away. Can you say I think uh, something's finally switched in me. I think it uh, takes a bit of time when you, you know, to translate or to transpose yourself from uh, daily living, you know, just at home or working and such, to living on the road. Uh, the routine takes a while to, you can't just flip it, you can't just turn it on and off. It takes a bit of adjusting, and the last few days were very stressful, but uh, yeah, I woke up this morning completely new much more relaxed and yep yeah, I think a lot of that has to do with getting here wherever here is Metaponto uh, about 40 kilometers away from Toronto and it's just so much more chilled out thank god so have a morning coffee and then we'll hit the road Well, it's not quite Pompeii, but uh, I think it makes up for it. Uh, we have long left Spartacus behind, both geographically and chronologically. We have gone back in time about 600 years. This is the Temple of Hera, dating from the 6th century BC. And if you're a little bit unfamiliar, you might be thinking, but hang on, we're still in Italy, right? Yes, we are. We're still in Italy. But this whole southern region of Italy even up to uh, Napoli, where we were yesterday, was once called Magna Grecia, 
Greater Greece because southern Italy, the peninsula, was settled by um, Greeks. Many of the Greek city-states of, of archaic and classical Greece sent colonies to colonize this land. And yeah, it became culturally and linguistically Greek. So we have long left the Romans behind and it sort of is a prelude to uh, what we're going to be seeing a lot more of from now on. It's beautiful. I have never seen a Greek temple before in my life. My first one. A lot of grey clouds are blowing in and it's got chilly all of a sudden so it's time to skate on over to Brindisi. Might even get a drop of rain by the looks of it. The wind is uh, whipping up. It's no use to complain I started out with pain There's no sign of weakness in me Do I compel you like you compel me? And nothing stays the same And no one said it would I would not think of such things if I could if I could help myself, if I could Well, I guess that's Italy. Um, I'm gonna end this here. That was a flying trip down the boot of Italy. Three days. Yeah, not too bad. Um, it's quite a small country. You could do it in a day. It'd be a long day, but you could do it in a day. But uh, phew, you'd be fairly tired by the end of that. And being tired driving on these roads with uh, these Italian drivers, uh, it's not something I'd recommend. I can imagine it's very nice to travel around the country if you have lots of time. Uh, and if you're not under any pressure, time pressure or any weather pressure, anything like that. Um, but so yeah, look, it's not very fair of me to make a judgment on an entire country after spending only three days and pretty much just driving straight anyway. But um, yeah, so far, not my favorite country to have been in. Um, everyone I have met has been lovely. The food has been great. Uh, what food I ate, which was two pizzas. Pizzas were, the pizzas were lovely. Um, and accommodation wise, I stayed in four places. Yes, four places. And they've all been quite affordable. Now bear in mind it is the end of October, so it's the end of, you know, it's out of season. I'd say all these places go rocketing up uh, during the summer months. I can imagine they do. They've all been private um, owned, but I've been using booking.com to find them and I haven't had any trouble. They've all been, all the hosts have been very friendly and uh, very helpful. But yeah, the big strain has been the driving and adjusting to the Italian way of doing things. Um, and also just keeping the morale up, which has been sort of lacking the last few days. But uh, I foresee that disappearing. Today was already better, so we're getting there. And tomorrow, a new country that I've never been to before. And that is excited. I am looking forward to that. Yeah, so we shall see you very soon for whatever lies ahead. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.